Yeah, that came loose easily. The rewind button through the cleaner, the string does not. The washer can go through the cleaner. And the screw here that drives the sprocket from the sprocket shaft needs to come out. Lift out that sprocket shaft. Here's our sprocket. At the base, what have we got left? Well, this screw holds the spring and the lock lever for the rewind button in place. And now I can lift out the, uh, take out the shutter, I suppose, again. That was only finger tight because that's how I put it back. I'll pop the lens and shutter assembly off to one side. It's the camera body. Okay, so this piece here, this plate on the front that positions the shutter stops it from being able to turn. It also has a coupling on it for the rangefinder. So we want that off. And the coupling for the rangefinder is this arm, which comes back to this screw here. And it's that screw that pulls the rangefinder arm forward as you move the uh, focus towards the, away from the infinity position. So there's the plate with its hinged arm. I'll take the door off the front, I think. Now, so we've got hinge pin screws top and bottom. There is probably a washer between the door and the body of the camera. There's a spacer. Here's one at the top. A little thin one there. That's a black one. That's the thinnest of them. There's another one here, thicker one, that probably came from the base. I don't normally put them through the cleaner because they're easily lost. Okay, so if I stretch up on the door I can unhook that from the track. There's cartridge paper washers top and bottom. Just uh, They give you a little bit of friction. Reduces the amount of rattle you get. Okay. This piece here, we can have that off. Now that's for the that's the gear that runs through the camera from front to back and couples to our cocking rack which runs along the top. That telescope, it's a two-piece arrangement. Which is fortunate because if it didn't do that, it would have to poke out the back of the camera when you fold things up. Okay, so there we have it. Here's the cover. Now since that's got paint on it, I won't put that through the cleaner. Now two screws can go through the cleaner. Here's the gear and the support bracket. You can see the slot in the back here where it couples to the arm coming through from the back. Now. I'm just checking this now, see if there's any sign that that focus scale ring has shifted on the outer helical. Normally you can see that by damage around the screw heads. There appears to be none. So I can be fairly confident that that's correctly positioned. That the nothing has so far moved. Now I'm just checking here. Yeah, it won't go back quite far enough. I need to... Mark my alignment from the outer helical 
from the focus scale ring to the outer helical which is the bright brass piece and I'll describe a couple of lines across at the bottom and one at the top now I scribed that one wrong so I've scribed the inside and outside helical instead of the outer helical and the focus scale ring so let's just That may not be correct. So we'll just put a line through that. I've also got to get the alignment of the inner and outer helical correct, and normally I do that by aligning them so that their front surfaces are dead level with each other, and then putting a scribe mark across them. And normally I use the same scribe mark I've used on the outer helical. This is all quite sticky with grease. So this part's getting this to bits. Well the four black screws hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. Just checking the peeling away okay. Yeah the little felt uh, gasket has seen better days I think we will glue that back together if it's split it's not uncommon for that to have decided that it would like to stick to both sides originally it was glued to the back of the uh, focus mount so six screws here hold the retainer plate in place And the inner and outer helical will come out. Alright, so now I'm just going to rotate this until I've got both surfaces level with each other. Just using a straight edge to judge that. That's good. And then I'll extend my scribe marks across here. So now I've got marks to enable me to put the focus mechanism all back in the right place without any argument. Four screws hold the focus mount onto the back of the front standard here. They were just bordering on coming loose. If they're loose you end up with some rattle there, you'll find that the shutter rattles on the front of the camera. Okay, let's recover those four black screws. You can see the glue line around here where the felt was stuck to it. And it has ceased to stick to it, it's stuck to the bellows instead. Let's recover these four screws and deal with that later. Okay, so the body, what are we down to now? The struts mechanism. Okay, four screws. One at the top here. Oh, and it came loose. One at the bottom here. Which very rarely comes loose without a fight. No, it is coming loose. Okay. That's a spacer washer from the bottom of the camera between the struts and the casting. Two more screws visible here in the film cassette well. I'll just close that front up. See if these will come out without a fight. And they very rarely do. Now they need a little bit of hammer attention 
Yeah, and they will do too. Okay, so I'll just give that a thump. Now I hold the camera between my knees to do this job. So you never get to see that. One screw loose. Couple of sharp taps while you're applying some torque to the screws is all that's required. Remove those two screws. I think this is the first camera I have actually serviced in at least two weeks. Okay. That's the shaft that cocks the shutter. This is the gear that runs to a uh, an idler in the camera body and that idler is in turn moved by the um, cocking rack. Now that washer I told you about before was not the washer I told you about. This is the washer that I was speaking of. The washer I was showing you would have been off the shutter release, the spacer. And here's the spring that comes off here. That's the return spring for that shutter release for the struts. So here's the here's that felt that used to be glued to the back of the front standard. As you can see it's changed its allegiance. It's decided it would rather be glued to the front of the bellows. So I'm going to peel that off there and glue it back where it came from. No, the camera body here. Or well, the back I need off. I need the back off because I want to straighten that hinge up. The leather, there's big Zeiss bumps at this end. I think they're just over rivets so there's no point me peeling the leather off just so I can get at the hinge. It's better for me to drive that pin out. At the other end you can see that leather's all cut along here. I'll have to glue that back down in place but I don't need to get the leather off to do that. Um, I'm more likely to end up in trouble if I do. But I want the back off and I want to get the leather off the back. So I'll find my punch and drive that hinge pin out. There's my pin punch. It's actually designed for removing uh, watch strap plugs, I think. Look here, pins from watch straps. Let's see if we can drive this out. That's enough of a start. I can get onto that with a pair of pliers now and pull that out the rest of the way. Well that came out without much of a struggle. That's ideal. You can see probably the corrosion lines along that hinge pin. That's just where it's been running in the in the hinge itself. I'll put that to one side. In fact that can go through the cleaner. I'll put the body down. Let's have a look at this back. I've got to straighten this up. Um, it's been pushed in badly here. So I will have to use my panel beating techniques and just push that back again. Once I've pushed it back and then again I can tap that edge down because at the moment that edge is, you can see it's got a bit of a nerk on it and it's that uh, that's what's cut the leather. Okay. Got that down flat. I need to drive it down here at this point. So I need something broad across there. 
and I think I can probably find a punch of some sort that will do that. Well that's not perfect but it's perfecter than it was. So we'll call that a win. Now I've just got to get the leather off this door, get rid of the ice bumps and contemplate whether I'm going to be repainting the door. Just trying to get the scalpel under the edge of this leather. It's stuck very well. Uh, the cameras that are easiest to deal with with leather are the ones that have a degree of corrosion on the body because that gets underneath the, the adhesive and lets the leather strip off very easily. At least the leather appears to be quite supple and strong. Which means once I get it up past this corner I shall probably be able to peel it off. Alright, let's see how this goes. Take this, if you do this, if you're peeling leather off, take it very, very slowly. If you, uh, if the leather does start to tear, you can stop and repair a small problem rather than continue and end up with a big problem. You can see this leather's in very good order. And these are the Zeiss bumps here, that horrible green rubbish. Just checking the finish of the leather, making sure that it's not suffering from this process. Now if I was just getting rid of ice bumps, I'd probably stop right here at this point, right on the edge of the body. Clean out the ice bumps and then glue this back down. But because I'm going to actually paint this door, look at the state of that paint. See the way that's just coming off there with my fingernail? I mean, that, that would be rubbish right from the factory, that, that paint. It's because they didn't use an etch primer or anything on the uh, paint. And that aluminium is not an easy metal to paint. It, uh, Paint doesn't stick particularly well for it. Okay, so I've got this right up to this point now. This is where it's over the chromed brass edge 
of that hinge there and it's the leather stuck quite firmly at that point the edges are also likely to be skived thinned down so I'm going to be extra careful here not to tear the leather I'll use my scalpel to uh, help split that leather away. That sound is the scalpel blade scraping down on the metal. I want to keep the blade hard against the metal, not cut through the leather. Pretty much it. Okay, so our leather's good, that's safe. Getting it to go flat where those bumps are is always difficult. Um, Typically you end up with a little dent or a divot there, but uh, it'll look better than bumps. And this, yeah well this rubbish needs to come off. And this forms under the leather. Probably where there are dissimilar metals, that's probably what prompts it. That and the chemicals in the leather itself promotes electrolysis probably. But um, these rivets that you see here, they're all nickel plated brass. And they probably lose their nickel plating fairly promptly when they're being thumped. And that green colour, I always associate that with copper. I'll get rid of that rubbish. Okay, so this door. Well, the paint needs to come off so I can paint it. Look at that. That's just coming off with my fingernail. So the top and bottom edges here, I want to repaint. Now here where it's, it's got these serrations in the metal, often the paint's stuck quite well there. Um, it's not an area where it's going to wear much. And often the paint, for that little bit of extra tooth that the corrugations have provided, is enough to have 
caused that paint to stick well. Now how do I paint these? Well I think I've shown you it on previous videos I'm sure. But basically I just use a, uh, a can of automotive touch up paint. Black of course. It's a black acrylic. And but first of all I prime this stuff. Prime it with a uh, etch primer. Also black because that helps cover my sins. And the paint itself, well, I usually give it a couple of good coats on top of the primer. And I've just got a little toaster oven, one of those cheap toaster ovens that you get for almost nothing at the appliance shops. I'll just put it in at about 60 degrees centigrade, give it 10 or 15 minutes, and that uh, cures the paint. You end up with a hard, glossy finish, quite scratch resistant, and uh, looking considerably better than bare metal. Okay, so this, I have to clean this all down, sand all those edges, well I'll use a scotch bright on those, that's all I'll use to do those edges. I've got to mask everything else off like the end of the door here and the inside and uh, clean all of this. That glue that's on that surface that glue is solid, that dull finish there is like the, um, the layer of leather, it's like the, the surface of the leather that's left on there. So I've got to make sure this is absolutely grease free, and particularly along those edges and I want to make sure that all these grooves in here are free from old paint, because if I don't get them free from old paint then of course the new paint will only be as good as the old paint in terms of how well it sticks and I can do better than that. Well I think that looks a little bit better so all that remains to do is to put the leather back on there. Okay so there's the camera back on the camera again uh, leather stuck back in place body edges painted you can see that the Zeiss bumps at this end, at the hinge line on the front panel, are gone. And pretty much they're gone on the back panel as well. So that's the body cleaned up, ready for reassembly now. I've got the other components, of course, have been through the ultrasonic cleaner. And now it's just a case of reassembling stuff.